inverter was on fire or something. The first is this scene, and we were wondering what was going on, and everything was normal. Well, maybe. We people celebrating all from my homeland Like my old man say, there's nothing impossible So we have to bring this message to my brother Lyrical straight from the crew Out to the blue Alright, good morning. It is Sunday morning. We're anchored over here right in front of the main town. And today we are going to sail up to Kariaku. Is that your new sailing hat? Yeah. It's pretty cool. Damn. Huh? What do you think about that? It's about 30 miles from here up to Kariaku right there. Uh, the wind yeah. is kind of out of the east right now and it is super light this morning. I think we've got like maybe three or four knots of wind right now, but I think we can expect as we come around the corner here, uh, we can start seeing more breeze. Fortunately, today's a work day for me. Adobe Premiere messed up yesterday and I lost like about six or seven minutes of a video, which is like probably 10 hours of work. I'm kind of glad there's no wind today because I can work as we're motoring north. <laughs> there's one interesting thing about the sail and it's right off the northern tip of Grenada, there's this thing called Kick'em Jenny, which is a submerged volcano. And this is the exclusion zone because this thing is literally bubbling and throwing out stuff right now. And if it throws out a lot of gas when you're over that, it can actually affect the buoyancy of the boat uh, and can, can be quite dangerous. Uh, other than that, we just don't hit any islands and don't hit any reefs. And uh, that's about it. How do you feel about leaving Grenada, Brady? It's a sad day, but it's a beautiful day. And moving on now feels feels good for me. I think it's time and to see what's up north and I'm excited to kind of jump up the chain of islands and just have shorter sails like today. It's just a day sail and we're gonna be there this afternoon. I feel like Grenada's been the closest thing that we've had to like some sort of a base. It never gets easier, man. The more we say goodbye to people, the harder it gets. What are you doing now? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Holy balls. I'm adjusting our leech line on the mainsail because yesterday when we were sailing we made it way too tight. So I need to loosen it. The leech line is this line here that goes on the left of the sail and kind of creates a nice shape for the outer edge. And right now, if you can see, it's really tight. It's really strapped. I'm gonna get the mizzen out there, Nate Dog. I do. Oh, I'm gonna have to put my hair up first. What kind of a sailor has to stop to put his hair up first? I want to put my hair! <laughs> Good, good. I got tagged in by Coach, so <laughs> he's letting me motor sail up the, the coast here of Grenada, and uh, I just got to follow that other sailboat, so it's pretty easy, huh? <laughs> Don't hit anything. So we got the cats from Precision Sails on board today, and they are fine-tuning the sails. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Welcome to Grenada. Nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you, man. Welcome to Grenada. Welcome, yeah. welcome to Grenada. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, somebody. That went smoothly. The idea was Precision would supply us with designs and fabrics to test. In return, we'd sail the hell out of them and provide real-world feedback. So far, it was a splendid match. Nice. Kind of a Grenada airport tradition. Nice. Love it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so what are you guys trying to do out here? 
we're just trying to bring the main down a couple inches at the front trying to make small adjustments to the sails so what's the kind of happy place that you're looking for here i'm looking to get the right angle off the clue because then the leash isn't too tensioned or the foot isn't too tensioned do you think we're gonna nail it this time we're gonna have to mess with it a bit we'll have to mess with it <laughs> How many miles were on the old mainsail? Let's see, we put that mainsail on in, would have been Langkawi or Thailand? Somewhere in Malaysia, I think. It's in Malaysia. Uh, probably 25 or 30,000, I would guess. What would you say the state of it was? It's pretty f <laughs> in the pretty much category. Yeah, the, the belly was really stretched. So this part of the sail here, the belly takes a lot of load on these roller furlings and it stretches differently than the, the top part. So basically when you look at the sail, it looked like a pregnant lady and the belly was just like and the top of it was still trim. And when you go to furl that in, because this part is stretched, and the other part is not, it sort of overlaps itself and then it, it does like this weird mess when you're trying to furl it in and uh, then it sails like shit also. And how many miles were on the mizzen? Old mizzen? Whoa, we put that one on in uh, Australia. So probably, shit, probably 50,000 or more. That's a, that's a lot. She's looking rough. Yeah. I mean, pretty good though. That sail held up pretty well. It only had one tear. Yeah. Started. But we, we have repaired it about a dozen times. You know, little things here and there. Gonna miss that Canadian coastline. Yeah, it's so pretty. I love this view out here. There's always, like, it's always pretty cloudy and then the sun will just shine through on certain little parts and light up, like, this perfect little neighborhood over here or a certain peak, so pretty. What we got here, it was just like, drop the hook, chill, make friends, kind of get into a routine. And we did all of those things. We made so many friends, so many cool people we met. Um, so we had a little going away with them last night and goodbye beers and it's pretty sad. Like, you know, outside of our crew, we don't really get to have a constant group of friends and we really did find that here in Grenada. So it, it sucks kind of saying goodbye always again and again. <laughs> but I mean, in the big picture, it's all good because then you just have friends all over the place. It's going to be a little bit different because you have to steer by the wind. They can't really go more than 30. Yeah. I love the moment when the motor turns off and it just gets super quiet. You can start to hear like all the wind around you and the waves around you. And that like one specific moment where it cuts off is just magic. I love it. What do you think? Are you happy with what you see? I am so far. Yeah? Yeah. So you designed both of these sails? Yeah, I designed both, yeah. Nice. And how did you get into sail design? I'd always sailed my whole life. Yeah. So it was something I thought I would enjoy and I do. Bought SailPack, the design software, and started learning how to design. I, there's no school. You just have to learn by mistakes and by people that you meet. And so we did a little bit with one of the guys from Sailback and uh, kind of took off from there. I just started a new book called yeah. Don't thing. Stop the Carnival. Yeah. And it was given to us by our friends at LTD. And it's about a fictional island in the Caribbean, but it kind of takes you through, I guess, typical West Indie experience that happens from island to island. So apparently if you want to survive down here, you're supposed to read this once a year. <laughs> so. How are we looking? We're doing pretty good. We're just getting around the 
the leeward side of the island and I expect the wind to come more easterly as we get around the point and then uh, hopefully we'll be able to make some tracks north. Yeah. Right now on this course we'll go right through the volcano which we don't want. Hey, well, I don't know if it's true but what we've heard <laughs> is that it was actually a ferry out here like not recently but that was going over the uh, volcano and it erupted so like all this gas came up and with the bubbles it just lost buoyancy and like sank straight to the bottom it just like disappeared oh, and all the people ago. died this i do not know back before the interwebs <laughs> <laughs> and things could be verified <laughs> the oh. theories for the Bermuda triangle as well is that it's actually uh, pockets of gas come up and uh, literally the boat will just lose its buoyancy, right? Because the water can't displace enough weight if it's filled with air. leave it in the backpack until we get in the dinghy. Okay. Going for a little flight, eh? Uh, this is just to slow us down. You can take over? Okay. You're doing such a beautiful job, though. Okay, you ready? The boys are hopping in the dinghy. And they're going on a drone sailing mission. Well, we are you a fan of the flying the drone, Kaza? No. <laughs> I do not fly the drone and I can barely watch when Brian flies the drone because it stresses me out so much. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's just something about it. This is really stressful for me. So. No. I focus on other things. <laughs> Kaza's up there on the bow with a GoPro on her big ass stick trying to get some shots of the crazy waves. <laughs> it's pretty entertaining to watch. She's getting rolled around and trying to maneuver this thing through the air. So the paper. Clear it, clear it, clear it, clear it! <laughs> okay. Good. Successful mission? <laughs> Oof, yeah. Got the drone back, got back on the boat, got some sweet shots. We're good to go. We're doing all right. We're getting some pretty big wind shifts though, like 25 degrees this way and then back 30 degrees this way and so it's a bit challenging when the boat's getting knocked. Look, look at now, it's like starting to luff. 
which is annoying. And then the boat slows down, and then you get hit by a wave, and then it picks up again. And the bow falls off. But... The closer we got to carry coup, the stranger the wind got. Wind from that direction. Where we want to go? That direction. Current that direction. Yeah, we we've had a squall that came up that was like 25 to 30 knots. Then it kind of went east southeast. And then when it lightened up, it was coming almost out of the north. And now it's coming northeast again, which is exactly where we want to go. We made it 8.8 .8 since I started since lunch. Same town. Oh, three hours. Finally, we decided to motor sail the last few miles through the pass. Be able to go down there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I thought the inverter was on fire or something. Or yeah, the, yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. I saw the yeah. smoke. Ooh. Yeah. Shake shakedown first. Because your video is too good that you're watching down there. Uh huh. Good thing we're on a sailboat. Yeah. yeah. I'll let that cool down and we'll have a look at what the problem is. I'm good. Shit. Put a pin in it. Well. <laughs> Beside and saying, stop motoring you. See? <laughs> <laughs> After letting it cool down for a bit, I decided to see just how bad it was. I think the problem is that the engine actually overheated. Uh, two options maybe we sucked up air because we were getting knocked around by the waves and the impeller melted, or it just went bad, or something else is wrong. But I think it's the salt water pump, the raw water pump. So. All right, Brady, can you start it up again? Most boats have a small hose run off the siphon brake, where you can check the flow of water from the raw water pump. On Delos, it's a little hole just behind the engine room door. Okay, turn it off. Yeah, it's just pushing out air. Air and no water's coming out, so take a look at that pump. There you go. The verdict. It's a bad impeller. I don't know why. I don't even remember the last time I put this one in, honestly. But my guess is it sucked up air or something when you were getting knocked around and had the engine running in. When it sucks up air, then you don't get water in here and then this thing heats up and destroys itself. It's a real good design. Could anything get through there, sea strainer rise? Like if it sucked up a piece of... Yeah, I mean, we could have gotten the other option is we sucked up something into the sea strainer. And then this thing basically clogged, right? Yeah. Wanted to replace this pump anyway. Oh, why? Because it's starting to leak on this front seal. Where? Uh, right here. Like every once in a while the, the seal in front goes bad and then it starts dripping out salt water. Um, but that's a, another unrelated problem. So that's the pump that brings in salt water to cool the engine. Exactly. exactly. What do you think about that, senor? Yeah. Impellers. It's always the It's always the impeller. Not always, but... Look at all those chunks in there. You guys gotta help me count them. Okay. Get in there, there, Nate. There you go. There, Nate, dog. So what if, what if... Impeller chunks. Brian, what if it was Make running... Make sure all the pieces are there. What if it was running for a while and nobody noticed the temperature going up? What else could be damaged from running it like that? I mean... The, the oil? The coolant boiled out. Yep, and then the engine would have heated up and you could damage the oil, you could damage the, the rings, I think. Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't think we got them all yet. <laughs> what else is in there? Some rocks. See, that could damage an impeller and cause it to be f***ed up. Oh, a seashell. Yeah, look at that, a seashell. Comes from the sea strainer. 
You gonna make a necklace out I of that, am. man? I probably sucked up Ash from Kick'em Jenny, and that's what did it. Kick'em Jenny! <laughs> Kick'em Jenny, Kick em Jenny Kick em strikes um, again. There's pieces of like shells that grow, or barnacles that start growing in the salt water. So, like, even the sea strainer, they'll grow inside before the sea strainer. The sea strainer is supposed to remove big stuff, but like, if there's a tiny, tiny one, like, can make its way through and then attach on the inside of the, the hose on the wrong side of the sea strainer and then grow and then break off eventually. That's what ends. Get out of our pipes, you don't want to live in there. But it's a perfect place because there's constant water flow. The perfect place? Yeah, man. That's what I said. Yeah, that's what I just said. <laughs> had a crazy zoom going on yeah, right I'm there. Yeah, I'm sure you're zoomed right in. I love shooting with the Real 4K. Funny blue. You can zoom yeah, in on people. Somebody's gonna have to watch through this damn footage, and it's gonna be like not usable. Thanks for wasting my time. <laughs> Try and spin that one. See how hard that is? Mm -hmm. I think that bearing is no good. Ball bearing is bad. After seeing the condition of the bearings, I decided to replace those as well. Spare bearings for all the crucial pumps on Delos is something I like to keep on board. You never know when you might need them. Oh, yeah. It's way smoother than what it was before. There's like this, uh, see that little O-ring? Oh, yeah. So that's a water slinger. So that as, if this seal, which is that seal right there, is the one that goes bad. So if that seal goes bad, then water leaks in here, and then it runs down the shaft into these bearings and ruins the bearings, which is probably what happened here. Right. But this little ring in there, I don't know if you can see it, black one, uh, is supposed to catch the water and sling it out and then it drips through these holes before it gets to the bearings. Yeah. Exactly. It's a, it's a good idea, but... Yeah. Yeah. Is that bad, is it? No. I think that's... I mean, they're new bearings, so they might... It's smooth. Yeah. It still needs to go in a little bit more. Yeah. It definitely sounds better than that other one. Where you want it in the center? Mm, that's where I like it. I don't know if that's where it's supposed to go, but <laughs> that's where it seems to sling stuff pretty good there. <laughs> this is what the impeller is supposed to look like. Look at that nice, clean, fresh impeller. Yeah. We're ready to impel. Stay dog! Alright, now what are we doing? Just cleaning this shit off of here. Yeah. The old impeller didn't come with a seal. So I had to use uh, the good old RTV. But the new one came with a seal. Why, didn't it, why wouldn't it come with a seal? That sounds stupid. I don't know. So they could save like one Of course you'd want to replace one the cent. seal if you're replacing the impeller. Nope. Separate. <laughs> purchase that part separately, Brady. That's how they make their money. Seal. Okay. Put any kind of silicone lube on that impeller there? I never have. Just give it a spit. But I guess we could. I don't know if that does anything. Or It'd probably stay on there all about one second yeah. until it blasts through and the water comes out. Like as long as it stays wet, it'll last forever, right? Yeah. Yeah. Does it matter which way those are folded when you put it in? It'll it does not. It'll write itself. Because, okay, so see how it, it just sort of, now it's going that way. Yeah. And if we do it the other way, it'll just like, now it's going that way. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I'm sure you could pre-meditate it, figure yeah. out which way this thing's supposed to spin, but really, you see how easy it flexes itself in one quarter of a turn. Yeah. Do you, how do you know the proper tension for that belt? That's a good question, man. I just do it pretty tight. Okay. Not too tight. Just, just tight enough. Enough so that if I push down on it, it doesn't move too much. So Otherwise, it puts a lot of wear on the bearings. You that know? belt has never broken before, has it, or worn out? Nope. So. The timing belt you want to be real careful about, like that one you measure. 
but the other ones I just do pretty tight. Water's on. Okay. Go ahead and crank her up. Crank her up. Still nothing. What is that squeaky? Uh, that I couldn't tell you. Can you hear me? There's still no water coming through? No. What? This is to make the water shut off. And sometimes you get an airlock in this guy. This is the sea strainer. soon. There we go. So now that thing's full. Okay, if there was an airlock, it should now be released. Yep. There it goes. I think there was a little airlock in the sea strainer. So, engine's running. We are now motor sailing in, which is good because there was not really any wind and we got two more hours of daylight. So. There's so many. They're coming from everywhere. From like way over there. Yo, oh my shit. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's so loud. taking a poop and I could hear them from the inside of the boat. It's pretty cool. I was you like, oh, dolphins! <laughs> Pinch it off! <laughs> Out of all of the eventful things that take place on a sailboat, I think that dolphins are the one thing that's like the most thrilling and exciting and gets everyone up on deck like the quickest. So <laughs> it's pretty funny to see. Yeah, it took a little bit to fix the engine, but once we did, dolphins greeted us as we came in and this place looks absolutely green and not very populated and I heard the diving is awesome so pretty stoked about this one Up next on Delos, we set sail north, dropped the hook at Union Island, and explore the underwater wonderland of Tobago Keys. It's not an issue because there's going to be adjustments in the sail. Ooh, so. <laughs> hey guys! <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway. Awesome. <laughs> that should be in the video. That should be in the video. <laughs> Pinch it off! <laughs> Let me try. A couple of hosers. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sorry. A couple of hosers. Real so sweaty, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> Business in the front, 
party in the back. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> you like it? I like it a lot. <laughs>